Welcome to 1337 and the start of the Hundred Years' War. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, in the last one, we did lose Hugo III, and then Ethelred aged up into a teenager, and Genevieve aged up into a child. Maggie's two children, Roland and Johannes, made it to toddlerhood, but uh, she did have a baby that did not survive. Some kind of mystery baby was born from a ghost, and I'm not sure if that's even a thing, but we'll find out. <laughs> and we did lose Agnes, beautiful, wonderful Agnes. And uh, Milo did age up into a teenager. Margaret, did Margaret age up into a toddler? Or was she always a toddler? I can't remember. But anyway, we have toddlers to teenagers now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, let's see. Robert, so mystery baby, baby died, twins, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, I think we're in good shape here. And, oh, they're pregnant again, actually. Good stuff. And um, Milo is working on the country caretaker aspiration. I don't know if we'll actually be able to finish it given the time period, but we'll find out. I know this is what you're all waiting for. The Hundred Year War will start. Also, Roger's supposed to get married, so we'll marry him if he doesn't go to war. If he does go to war, we'll wait on that. But anyway, One Hundred Year War. Whew. Okay, also William's aging up, so let's roll for William first, um, because if he doesn't survive, he can't go to war, so it doesn't even matter. He does survive. Okay, and then how long does he survive for? Rolling the D10. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Seven years. Okay, so he can go to war. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, William, one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, six year, seven. What did I just say? Oh, it was, shoot. It was seven, right? I think it was seven. <laughs> I already forgot. Bennett died. Okay. Now, okay, <laughs> let's do this. In 1337, roll a d4 for any male teen to see, it, male teen and above to see if they head off to war. Do this for all of your sims, even your side household. If your sim rolls a four, then they go to war and must move out. Okay, let's get a d4 going. And we're rolling it for every guy who is a teen or above. Okay, let's... Um, Do priests go to war? I don't think they do. I don't know. Hold on. Let's Google it. Um, did medieval priests go to war? Many European priests were allowed on the battlefield as chaplains and could only defend themselves with clubs. Oh, medieval European canon law says that a priest could not be a soldier. So he could go, not be a soldier, but he could, like, go to war to, like, help people, I guess. I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. We're not going to roll for them. Okay, let's roll for Roland first. Roland does go to war. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, I need to make, like, a war household now. Where are the... Oops. No, stop. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Oh, man, already? And she's pregnant don't die, Roland. Um, okay, Roland, go over here. I know you don't have any money, but you don't really need it. Um, okay. Oh, man. Okay, next is the Walter side family. We have Bate and Jan. Bate and Jan. Okay, okay. So far, so good in that household. In the Walter Main family, we just have Ellis. Okay, Ellis is good too. Over here in this Bennett house, nobody. Okay. Let's save our household for last. Okay, here we have the big household. We've got Dante and then Roger Bennett. Dante. Dante's going to war. Roger. Okay, Roger, I guess you can get married, Roger. 
I don't have anyone to marry you to, but um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, I guess, which is right now. <laughs> um, not world, okay. Dante. Let me just like take some money for them. Okay, and then here, all we have is Robert. Oh, but Robert can't. Oh, <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I think I might just age up Hugh. Shoot. Maybe we could add, okay, here's what we're going to do. Can't believe this is happening to me. This always happens to me. Okay. Uh, first, I am going to move, you know, this is what I made priests for. <laughs> I don't know how old all this is, though. Let's move Aldith. And then... We will move you into here. Oh gosh, this is just a huge pain in the butt for me. Okay, next, Tartosa. I think that's the only other place we have Sims. Oh no, Forgotten Hollow, okay. Will William be going to war? No. Will Harold be going to war? Yes. Okay, I don't really care about losing his house. There's nothing in it, so. Oh, Harold. Look at all these people going off to war. Well, let's sell a lot of furnishings then. Okay. Okay, what was I doing? Forgotten Hollow. I feel like vampires should have a different role, but anyway, we have Caleb and Henry. Caleb, Henry. Okay, well, that's probably for the best. I don't want any vampires <laughs> going to war. I feel like they would get exposed as vampires. Okay, now for our household. Eric does not go. Milo? Does not go. Okay. Whew. That was a little scary, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was kind of scary. Okay. Um, let's go here. Who? So who is in the Hundred Year War for us? This is the war household. So we have um, Roland. Oops. Okay, it is typing. Dubois. Dante Big. Harold. Elling. Bo. And then Rob. Robert. Um, Bennett. Okay. So we are going to find out when. In thirteen forty two if they survive. All right. Who knows what's happening here? <laughs> okay, so I am going to uh, make Roger a wife. And other than that, uh, we'll hop into the game. So first we're here with Roger and he is going to get married to Matilda here. I just created her really quickly. And they are already romantic there we go it's just a quick little thing of us getting them together because I really think that um, you know we're gonna have a lot of people a lot of families that are just kind of on the side that are gonna be getting married having babies but it's not like you know we're not focusing on them so there are going to be circumstances in which I haven't really come up with anything for them but you know I don't have a story for her it's fine she's just a person he's just a person 
they're married. It's good. Maybe later they'll have some drama, um, but I think we have plenty of Sims in our main household now in order to do that for. So the reason that I had stuff going on with Margaret is because Agnes didn't have any siblings. So, you know, that's just... We have six kids. We have plenty of children to have drama with. We don't need to have our extended family members have drama as well. Anyway, we're back home now. <laughs> so um, I do want Milo to be taking care of the cow a bit because he needs to become friends with a farm animal. And I think the cow is the easiest because I wasn't even trying to make people friends with the cow and all they had to do was take care of it. And then they were friends with it. So I think we're in good shape there. I also want Milo to be cooking a lot. See, the reason is because Eric is going to die soon, and then the only, I mean, the only person in the house other than Eric who can cook is Milo, but um, also Eric is going to die in a couple years, and so it would be good for, you know, we'll just have Milo's family here in the future. Although, I think probably his kids won't be that much younger than his youngest sibling, so... There is that, because he's a teenager now. When he turns 16, he can get married and have a kid. We'll definitely still have some of his siblings here until then. Actually, that's a good point. Are we going to be able to fit all these sims in our household? Like, is Milo going to be able to have kids? Because um, if Eric dies, we replace Eric with Milo's future spouse. And then we need the kids to start aging up and moving out. <laughs> so that we can have room for Milo's kids. That's a good point. Interesting. I might have to end up expanding the household size after all, but we'll see. Also, um, we purchased a garden patch for his aspiration. We also need to socialize with a fox, rabbit, or bird five times, and also we need to visit each place in Henford-on-Bagley. So I'm just having him go to church and visit I also remember that there is like a tree stump here that we can talk to birds at, so that'll be good as well. And yeah, let's go mourn our mother a little bit. Oh, Agnes. I love you, Agnes. I miss you. It's hard when the generations change over. It really is. Anyway, um, let's just add some flowers for Agnes. Also, I forgot to do Roger's wedding portrait, which is something that totally happens to me all the time because I will forget to do wedding portraits and then one of the sims will die and then I'll have to bring them back to life to do a wedding portrait for them. <laughs> um, anyway, so here is, I'm just bringing the nun here because she is the painter. And let's bring these two sims here and we'll just pose them really quick and get a painting of them. There we go. That's how I do our, our wedding portraits is I bring the sims here and then I pose them like using a uh, pose player. What is it? Pose pack? I don't know. And um, then we take a picture. Very good. Okay. Let's uh, skip ahead a little bit. I'm trying to find ways to not make this video so long because I already spent like 10 minutes just setting up for the war. So um, I don't want this video to be a half an hour long. It's that's too much. <laughs> so um, we are having Milo work on talking to the birds, talking to the birds to get that checked off. And then we'll just quickly head over and grab a drink and then we'll head home and we'll have completed this part of his aspiration. I know we, I said we weren't really going to focus on it, but it is, I mean, we might as well if we've got time, right? Do some things. Anyway, um, like I said, we're just going to head to the bar for a quick drink and then call it good because that will be the third neighborhood in Henford on Bagley and that's all good I'm also kind of starting to wonder who we should marry Milo to because he is getting married in like two years so that is definitely something that we want to consider he could right now the only other teenager that he could marry is Ethelred and I'm just really not sure that they would be a good match because they I mean, they're just like of such different social classes. Like I know that they're distant relatives, but now that their parents are gone and everything, I just feel like I'm just not sure if I feel like 
that would actually happen, that he would be able to marry the first daughter of a lord as a farmer. So I think maybe not. So we might have to bring in someone new for him. But you know what? That could be good, too, because we could spin up a little story uh, for his future wife. We could really, you know, that's my chance to include some drama, maybe give her some kind of backstory that um, will cause some problems. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I think that that might be good. So here we are. Let's just do everything. I know. I'm sorry, Milo. I'm making you do literally everything. Oh, look, he can cook um, stew now. That's good. His cooking skill is improving, which is excellent. I don't know why I can't throw out that garbage, so I'm just going to drag it myself. Look at all of the gems that are around because we've had so many storms that when the lightning strikes, it leaves behind like a crystal. And a lot of those are lying around, which is actually pretty good for us if we wanted to make some money. But we already have almost $50,000. But I think, I, I don't know. I'm going to save the money for right now just because I'm thinking about our four sisters each of which is going to need a dowry. And if we gave them the most expensive one, we'd only be left with 7,000 simoleons. Of course, I don't think that they could marry into a very, you know, rich household right off the bat, but maybe like 5,000, we could go up one class. I mean, we are kind of related to, you know, the, the Lord. So we might be able to at least go above peasant class. Anyway, that would still be 20,000 simoleons. So... And we probably want to give some money to Bjorn for him to start out with, just to give him his own plot of land. So, yeah. Something to think about. Oh, a little bark. Yep, he hears something. Okay, both of my toddlers are passed out, so I'm just going to fix that. Everybody go to sleep, go to sleep. Very nice. Okay. What we need is to get to level... There we go. Okay. What we need is to get to level two of gardening because once we do, look at all these sparkly plants. We can finally evolve them. We're so close. I just really need that to happen. You go check on the eggs. You check on the bees. Why don't you just like do something? Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Yes. We're in good shape now. We can evolve things. We're talking to our bunny friend. We have a good bunny friend. Let's check on our cow friend. Yes, all right. We're doing good. Honestly, I, I'm i like ready for Milo to start his life. I, I feel good about it. And I think we're actually really lucky because I was worried that Milo was gonna get sent to war and then we weren't going to have our heir around and that would have been a concern because also when Eric dies Bjorn is not yet a teen so we would have a problem but I think we really lucked out in this part of the war that we don't have you know we're not having any problems we're doing pretty good so it didn't really affect us at all I think it only affected like well, two members of our household, and they weren't even of, of like, our main bloodline, so we're in good shape. Yeah, uh, Harold can do whatever he wants now. I mean, his wife is dead. His adopted son has joined the clergy. It's just, he's just all by himself. You can do whatever you want. Um, yes. But wait, you can't because you're at war, so what are you trying to go on dates for? Maybe he's, like, off, what is it, the war was with France? Maybe he's, like, off fighting and, you know... How, how things used to happen is the soldiers go to war and, you know, you meet a pretty lady. And, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. Um, but yes, it's All Souls Day. I really don't want them to leave the house because we l went so many places yesterday. Okay, uh, the baby, the mystery ghost baby did survive his role to toddlerhood. This is just such a weird situation. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Um, and Maggie also survived her role, so which is good because she's got kids at home that she, um, you know, there's no one else to take care of. So let's get our kids all asleep. Oh, a baby. Okay. Uh, they, the 
baby did not survive, but mom did. So I'm s Maggie is just not having very good luck. I mean, she did have her two her twins, but after that, it's just no luck, no luck. That's too bad. Anyway, um, so looks like yeah, the other baby, the mystery ghost baby, did survive his role, but he hasn't automatically aged up yet. We have to wait for that to happen before we can try and summon him. If we can summon him then I am going to include him in our family. Might as well. Um, but if we can't summon him, I'm just going to pretend he doesn't exist. Maybe try to delete him. I don't really know how that happened, and I hope it doesn't happen again. I don't think it could happen again at this point, because it's been a year. But I was going to be like, I hope Agnes isn't ghost pregnant too. <laughs> what a weird thing to happen. Must be like some kind of consequence of MCCC. Anyway, we are friends with the bunny, so let's get a little tree something here and we'll be good and we can uh, fertilize some plants in the future as soon as we get to level three gardening and then we'll be done with this part. Honestly, I think the part that I'm most worried about with this aspiration is the winning um, a thing and I just don't know if we can do that. I don't know. Did they have... Um, you know, festival things like that before, like in the olden times. I don't know. So, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Let's cook some food. All right. Everybody get up. Let's get some food. Oh my gosh, my toddlers. Um, <laughs> my toddlers. <laughs> okay. Roland, Roland, Astrid also survives. Very good, our vampire girl. That's good. You have to go to the bathroom too. Yeah, we're we're starting to wind down. I think it's um the last day of the year, and then we're going to just head out and do a couple of maintenance activities. So let's go do that. I'm just off to kill a baby. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so we need to uh, kill Maggie's baby. I'm so sorry. And then we'll get a new picture of her for uh, her being a young adult on the family tree. That'll be good. And here we go. Yeah, oh, she's so pretty. I feel bad that her husband is... Um, away at war but I mean honestly they have a really good chance of surviving I think it's only like one number that they won't survive so I think they're in pretty good shape check out her well her I mean she's really got quite the set of traits <laughs> okay now let's head here and see if we can't get the ghost baby involved so here we go and I am going to use the teleporter to summon the ghost baby my ghost baby it's a really weird situation. But honestly, I like to think of it as Royce is just beyond the grave was like, I need to bear a son <laughs> for this family. <laughs> I just really feel like that's what she's like. Um, all right, there we go. Uh, I just need a picture of this little baby, give him a little makeover, and then we'll call it good, I think. So let's head into create a sim. Here we go. Purple, of course, and just throwing the same outfit on every single thing, so that's good. We're all set here. Look at that cute little baby. Excellent. Okay. Great job. Great job, team. Let's... Okay. Well, I guess that's... You know what? That's our cue. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. There's construction going on across the street, and the dog does not like it. So that's where we're going to wrap up, Harrison. <laughs> and I will uh, catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>